guys, welcome back to the channel Daughter of Increase. My name is Nathan Denise for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video. And I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. I just want to say that I feel so amazing, guys. Um, you guys know what's been going on, most of what's been going on um, when I made my update video. I don't know how long ago I made that video, but I was still struggling with a few things. And um, I'm feeling so much better to the point where I actually gave myself a manicure. And to some of you guys, it might be like, okay, you gave yourself a manicure, so what? But um, I was definitely the type of person that had a weekly or, yeah, a weekly skincare and beauty routine. I was doing facial masks twice a week. I was doing facial scrubs once a week. I was doing bubble baths once a week. I would do my manicures every week. I would do a pedicure every week. And then I, I like slowly fell off this year with doing that to the point where my nails were either getting acrylics on them. And there's nothing wrong with acrylics. Um, I just, I personally stopped doing acrylics for a long time because I preferred my natural nail length without the acrylics on top. But um, it was to the point where I was getting acrylics, and then when I took the acrylics off, I just did not care to have my nails painted. My nails were splitting, they were chipping, they were cracking, they were doing so much craziness. But I finally took it upon myself to organize my room this past weekend. Um, I organized both my bookshelves, well, not really organized this one, but I kind of organized it. Um, I went through all of my nail polishes because I have a mess ton of um, nail polishes. I'm like a nail fanatic. If you guys don't know, I am a freelance makeup artist. I do makeup for bridal work, photo shoots, videos, movies, things like that. I do a lot of work like that um, when I get the gigs. I've also worked in a hair salon as a makeup artist. And um, beauty is something that I love. So having not done such, like done so in so long, it's been very difficult. But I finally did a manicure and the color i'm wearing is a real cheap one that you can buy from right a and okay so i had to meet my phone because i forgot i had it on but um yeah you can pick this up i don't know if they have it available anymore because this was a part of a collection but um this is a sinful colors and you can pick these up for like three two dollars at um your local right a to walgreens the color is called crushed velvet and this was actually from the um kylie jenner collection that they had i really do love this color it's really gorgeous and it's just this gorgeous like purple with gold flex i know it's a little beat up on this side because i was like russian i ain't care um i was just super excited that i finally took it upon myself to do my manicure and i'm gonna do a pedicure tomorrow because my son is gone so i'm gonna have a mommy time i'm going to take a bubble bath i'm going to do all of that tomorrow but um yes i have my little cup here <laughs> i've taken a photo with this and put it on my instagram before and a lot of people ask where i got this cup from i get a lot of my mugs from either walmart target or i go to my local discount stores i have like three or four different local discount stores by my house and then i have a furniture spot that sells like cabinets beds cups mugs wine glasses and all that so i go there every now and then and pick up a few so i have my um i woke up like this makeup one because i am a makeup artist and i adore this mug it's so cute but inside i just have a mix of orange juice with grapefruit juice and it's delicious um but yeah and i was asked if i can do a skincare video I am going to add beauty videos on this channel, not heavily, because I actually do have a makeup channel that I used to do. I haven't done that channel in so long, but I'm going to get back into doing that because I haven't worn makeup in forever. But um, I'm definitely going to do a skincare video because I get asked a lot about my skincare, and um, my skincare is like the most simplest, basic thing ever, and I use the most inexpensive products, so I'm going to do a video on that. But that's not what this video is about. This video is a book review, and it's going to be a review on the gorgeous book called Cling that so many of you guys have requested me to review. It was this in Fervent that a lot of you guys wanted me to review. So if you haven't already seen my first review on Fervent by uh, ooh, Priscilla Shire, check that out. Just click the eye on the screen. But today's video is going to be all about Cling by Kim Cash Tate. And I rave about her all the time. She has a YouTube channel. I will leave her links down below. She is a phenomenal woman. Her spirit is so amazing. She um, is very vulnerable with people on the camera. She's very much open and transparent about her life. And I absolutely love her. And this book was the start of me falling in love with her. And not like that, but like I just, I love her spirit. I love her love for the word i love her fire for the word and i love the way she studies and stuff like that she does bible studies on her channel um she's done one on ephesians she's done first and second kings or was it samuel can't remember but she's done that she's doing one now on james um and i'm doing that with her phenomenal but this this is the book today um and 
this book has a special part in my heart because I do have several copies. Um, I say several copies because I literally own over 20 copies of this book. Yeah, it's it's bad. Um, the reason why I have 20 copies is because I'm so adamant about people reading this book and I love to give copies when I see people in person or when I do review, um, not reviews, but giveaways on this channel or Instagram or Facebook or whatever. I am so adamant about people reading this book. I've given this book out to so many people, not including like giveaways that I've done on the channel and Instagram. I mean like real life people in my life that I go to church with, my mother, like relatives, like I give everybody a copy of the book. So I own two copies of this book. I've read it twice already. It's such a phenomenal book. And to go with this, there is also a DVD study session. There are six videos to watch um, and they're just as good as the actual book. The book does include a study guide as well, which I think is awesome. There are questions that you can really dive into um, concerning the video as well as the book itself. But um, I'm going to dive into it. So, cling. It's based off of Deuteronomy 13 and 4, which says, You shall follow the Lord your God and fear him, and you shall keep his commandments, listen to his voice, serve him, and cling to him. That is where she basically got the basis of this book from, and that, I believe, was in the NASB right in ASB yes I actually actually have it written here I like to keep a scripture up for a week so I'm um, gonna have it there but I'm gonna quickly read the back of it and then tell you guys my thoughts so the back of the book says there is something about the word cling so many of us I'm sorry so many of God's commands can be satisfied from a distance but clinging puts us in his face it's personal and that's what this book is about choosing a lifestyle of intimacy with God Author Kim Cash Tate spent years seeking fulfillment in her relationships and career only to find herself disappointed by the imperfections of life, but then she discovered clinging to God. She learned to trust in Him, cultivating a love relationship that will last forever. Encouraging you to live in the fullness of God's love, Kling shares wisdom from biblical examples and the author's personal experience. It shows the importance of the spiritual disciplines of prayer and Bible reading and how to grow your faith and embrace an ongoing closeness with God. Discover clinging to God, which is a source of ultimate blessing and protection and inexplicable joy and peace. So, this book is all about spiritual growth, spiritual life, um, building a lifestyle that's based on intimacy with God. And by doing that, you, basically a way to do that is prayer, obviously, studying the word of God, obviously, and meditating on the word. And um, for me, this was one of the books that catapulted me into going deeper within my faith because I've always been the type of girl that was into like Sunday school and reading the Bible to pull out things and answer questions like that was me. Even as a kid, um, Sunday school was my favorite thing, getting the little booklets that they gave out, answering the questions, doing tests, that was all me. But when it came to studying the word for myself outside of church, I just, I didn't care. Um, listening to sermons didn't do much for me as a kid, you know. And then when I got into my teenage years, I completely um, kind of like compartmentalized God in a sense. Um, he was there when I needed him. But if I wanted to have fun and it was against his word, I would kind of like keep him in a box, which it sounds crazy to talk about. And I know a lot of you guys, I, I keep saying this a lot, and a lot of you guys have been asking me about the um, testimony series. That's coming. It's it's coming. Um, I just don't want to do it around the holidays. I thought about it. Um, doing it during Thanksgiving is not going to work for me. So I'm going to record it in December in parts. And then I'm going to start uploading them in January, first year, um, yeah, basically first out of the year. But, yeah, so, you know, I used to compartmentalize God a lot, and um, I wasn't intimate with him. He was there when I needed him, and then that was it. He was just sitting on sidelines until I needed him again, whatever situation it was. Um, but this book really shows that you're not supposed to compartmentalize him. You're supposed to keep him right there front and center in your face you're supposed to be in front of his face and i just i love the way this book broke everything down so um the first time i went through this book was <laughs> november 2nd 2017 i actually wrote the dates of um when i read this book and i have my little color coding key because i actually did color code but the first time i went through this book i enjoyed it um it was a really good read and i felt like it was something that I needed. Um, it talks about how trials teaches us to trust God and um, how in order for us to deal with trials and temptations Satan has to have permission from God to do so um, and you know it, it, it goes 
deeper and I'm gonna talk about more of the like book itself in a second but um some of the chapters are how we're created to cling and then recreated to cling um, knowing God intimately how we can make prayer a lifestyle uh, the wedge of dis disobedience sorry a moral clinging clinging to hopes dreams and callings and then the strong and courageous and clinging so um, yeah the first time I read this it was it was good like I loved it I gave it five stars like it was amazing but it wasn't until I went through it again the second time using a different method of annotating so um, I'm gonna shout out my sis Anne from transforming through God's word transform through God's word I always say transforming oh my gosh but transform through God's word that is a sister group sister everything to DOI um, I love my sister so much she's phenomenal she has a, a heart for God but um, it wasn't until I watched her annotating video that I switched up the way that I was annotating like the way she annotated was similar to how I annotated but she had extra things so I'll give you an example. So, before I was just using six colors. Six, yeah. I had yellow for key points, pink for scripture. Um, I was highlighting life points or things that were not relating to God. And orange, I was doing my definitions, prayers, and self-reflection in this. And it was it was okay. But I wasn't able to pull out as much as I knew that I could pull out in this book. So, when I went through it a second time, I was actually going to go through it in that book. But because I literally have a box of these books, I said, you know what? Let me get a new book. Start over. So I read this from July 2nd, 2018 to August 21st, 2018. So it took about a month um, because I did this with the Daughter of Increase Facebook group. I will be doing another read along probably with this book next year. Um, I feel like this Ferv and Fervent are two books that I feel like should be read twice. A I mean, not twice a year, but every year it should be read. But um, this time around, I was highlighting differently and underlining differently and pulled so much more out of this book it was i mean you guys i was getting so much more out of here but um, i'm just gonna go through some of my favorites from each chapter i guess because it's it's hard to explain this without getting too personal because um you know it will have an effect on you differently so the first chapter is all about um the introduction to the book and inviting you to intimacy with god and her just explaining to you how you can be intimate and um i think one of my favorite quotes from this book in this chapter specifically is on page nine where she says that problems for humanity are opportunities for God to demonstrate his power and I think that is so true because there are so many things that go on where we think it's a problem or it's an issue or we take things out of proportion and we feel like all doors are closed or we've been hurt too we've been hurt too much or we've gone too far that it caused a problem or a rift and it's really not the case um those are like the the key times in which you can really see God do miraculous wonders and miraculous things. And I mean, signs, wonders, and all. He is amazing. But, um, you know, it just really goes through that. Um, and talking about clinging to him, she gives you a definition of clinging and how it relates from the Old Testament to the New Testament and all of that. So um, I thought that was great. And then we go into the first chapter, which is about being created to cling. Um, and she says that God was fully involved in creating but the objects were all outside of him. They had nothing to do with him personally. So it puts to mind that you're specially and intimately designed by God and specifically for a purpose. And that purpose of you being created was not for yourself. It wasn't for the pleasures of the world. It was solely for God. He created me intimately to be intimate with him. And um, when I read that, it just it blew my mind. Because we all understand that he made us and he created us and crafted us beautifully and wonderfully made but um, when you truly think about it, he intimately made you. So he knows every part of you. He created you for a specific reason in a specific way. We understand that. But when you begin to even further understand that you were created specifically for a purpose and that purpose was to remain intimate with him, I think that just like takes it a whole nother level. It's just freaking phenomenal. Um, like, oh my gosh. Then she says that Jesus the word the son of god was there in the beginning creating jesus was with god in relationship together with the holy spirit and this is basically the divine godhead and it makes me think about that even further it's like okay we all know jesus was like this with god like he was close he was there for everything but um jesus never allowed his deity to overpower who he was as a man and he never discredited the holy spirit they were all working together as one. They all were intimate with each other, 
one didn't do something without the other. Like, the Holy Spirit needed Christ, and Christ needed God, but God also needed the Holy Spirit and Christ to do what he needed to do with the people of the earth, if that makes sense. So they were all intimate together. And, that I mean, that's just the first the first chapter, you guys. Like, Okay, so like I said, I'm only going to tell you a few things, because this, this goes on, and I don't want this to be, like, super long. But, um, what's another one? Making prayer a lifestyle. I think that was a good chapter. Because, um, for me, prayer is a very difficult thing. I'm more of the type of person that likes to write my prayers out. I talked about this in, when I did the fervent review. I am a writer. I like to write. I'm not... I don't like to talk. Um, and I know that sounds crazy because I make videos. But, um, that's just God with me, I'll tell you that. But I, I don't really like to talk with people, um... Sounds so weird. I'm like, if you want to call me, don't call me. Text me because I can text you for hours. But talking on the phone is very awkward um, for me. I don't know why. It's not that I have awkward moments with communicating. I just prefer to write. That's just the way that I prefer to speak and communicate. So speaking out my prayers is definitely not hard but difficult at times because I end up thinking in my mind. And um, there's nothing wrong with praying in your mind, but sometimes there has to come a point where you speak out loud to the Lord, when you have to speak your prayers out to Him. And what I find that works best for me is that I write out my prayers in my prayer journal, or whatever notebook I'm working in, or whatever I'm doing, and then speaking them out into existence. I have prayers on my wall, which are like by my table, but where I do my editing and stuff like that. I have them over there. I haven't read them in a minute, but um, I have those prayers for when I don't know what to pray. And I don't want to grab one of my thousands of like books on prayers. I will go to that wall and speak those prayers out. And I will pray them with power. Um, and there's a difference between praying and praying with power. Um, you can simply pray, Lord, thank you for life. Okay, cool. But, you know, there's a difference when you're putting power and effort and push into that prayer. Because it's now giving it more of a reach to God. I hope that made sense. But um, I'm going to quickly read. So, this is how God wants us to communicate with him without ceasing, which primarily involves two people, you and God, which I think that is great. And she says, pray without ceasing signifies regularity and consistency. Um, not consistency, sorry, constancy. So you're being constant and when you do that. And the pray without ceasing, so many people take that scripture out of context. It doesn't mean that you have to consistently pray out loud. Like, no. But you should always be in a mindset of prayer no matter where you are. If you're in a car, Lord, I thank you for this drive. If you're on a train, Lord, I thank you for protection. Um, if you're at work, Lord, I thank you for the ability to have Wi-Fi at work. Because not many people have Wi-Fi at work. You can thank God for so many things. For a seat. For your feet. If your legs hurt, thank him for the pain. And that sounds ridiculous, but you have the the ability to feel pain. Not many people do. So sometimes it sounds ridiculous, but you literally can pray over everything. I, I can thank the Lord for this beautiful, gorgeous mug because it's gorgeous and I love it, you know. But, um, I'm sorry guys, this video is going to be super long. But I, I, I just, I don't know how to talk about this book without actually reading the pages because... It's so profound. Okay, here's something that I, like, highlighted and underlined. Um, this was in chapter 9. Then the chapter is called Clinging to Hopes, Dreams, and Callings. So, um, she said that clinging to God is a constant journey, which is true. It's not something that happens immediately, and it's not something that's a one-time deal. You're going to constantly need to cling to God because there are going to be op there's going to be opposition, there's going to be trials, there's going to be obstacles in front of your way, and um, some people will allow that to stop them from clinging. There has been times in my life, my example, college. All throughout college, I allowed my obstacles and oppositions to stop me from clinging to God. And I can tell you guys right now, um, one of those situations with my parents, they ended up getting divorced um, when I was in high school, my senior year of high school, and. It didn't affect me my senior year because I was graduating, but it wasn't until I went to my freshman year of college and literally almost flunked out of school. I had a 2.1 GPA, and I think you need to keep a 2.4, 2.5, I can't remember what the minimum GPA was, but I literally almost flunked out of school. And I was partying, I was smoking weed, I was having sex, um, and not just like with random people, there was like one specific person I was constantly with who was my friend and i'm still friends with this person to this day like not like 
buddy buddy like that but we check up on each other every now and then um and we have an understanding but you know i completely like blocked god out i wasn't going to church my mother was like you come to church nope staying on school campus and i didn't go away my first year um i was away but like still in the state i went to school. i was born and raised in new york i went to school um in the bronx lived in the bronx but i ended up going to college in queens and um literally almost flunked my first semester second semester i had to go back home because my mother couldn't just she couldn't pay it the tuition literally was fifty seven thousand. i don't even know what tuition is now but in-state tuition at the time was fifty seven thousand dollars for in-state ridiculous but um i had to go home um and i went home and i just i wasn't up for it so i just cut school a lot like a lot and um i just i gave up so then i transferred schools and um freshman year i was doing pre-law and accounting hated it but i still kept doing it and went to school out here in jersey i went and i was still kind of doing the same thing not doing the same thing but like i just was not communicating with god so and god was just not in the forefront i was partying still smoking still drinking still skipping class you know because i just i was trying to find a, find a balance between things it wasn't until i went to school for a third time i went to three different colleges um just because tuition was too hard but the third college i went to i changed my major and i focused a little bit more on god it wasn't as intimately as it is now but um you know i changed schools and i switched my major to fashion merchandising because they did have a fashion program and you guys, I left school with a 3.57 GPA. I still have a year left to complete, but, um, you know, tuition is just way too much. But I went to that school and I focused. Now, I still partied and smoked and still did things that I wasn't supposed to do, but I was more focused on my academics. Um, I even had a boyfriend at the time who was actually into the word, and he himself was um, a virgin. So, like, I was a lot more aware like if that makes sense i was a lot more aware of what was going on but i still wasn't as intimate with god as i needed to be and honestly when i think about it now i feel like god was trying to get my attention in college and i just was like forget it i don't care um which is why now i have all this time to give him my time and dedication i feel like now in my 20 my late 20s um is a time where i'm so i'm i'm doing what i should have done in my college days if that makes sense but anyway back to this book um, yeah, so then she says that staying in the word and filling our thoughts with the word enlivens the communication. Our lives become a living and breathing ongoing dialogue with God, which is true. We should constantly have a dialogue with him. Talk to him every day. When you wake up in the morning, which I am terrible at. I'm not gonna lie. I'm terrible at morning prayers. When I, when I first wake up, I'm terrible. But, um, I try to remember to do it. Um, I put on gospel music and as I'm listening to my gospel music, I will pray. Like, I will sing those songs out as if they're a prayer. She then says that prayer puts the focus on the Most High God. And when you're focused on God, you can't help but praise and give thanks, which is so true. Here we have one that she says, have now, I'm sorry, we have now blessings that stretch into eternity. We have current afflictions that couldn't possibly to, um, compare with the glory to come, which is so true. We have so many blessings at this point in time. Con right like right at this second as you're watching this video i don't know if you're watching in the morning late at night in the afternoon two weeks from now when i'm recording this i don't care but at this point in time you have so many blessings but um we don't see those blessings we kind of get blinded by the afflictions we're dealing with but she says that the current afflictions that um we have can't possibly compare to the glory that's to come and that's just so true but i'm gonna get to the specific one that i marked because this video is almost 30 minutes long and it's ridiculous okay so i'm gonna get to this one point before i continue on to what i wanted to read but she says that every sin we commit um is under the blood of jesus and because given that we are made of flesh sin is a daily occurrence which is true um if someone angers you <laughs> And you say something out of anger, that's committing a sin. If someone hits you and you think about killing that person, it's a sin. If your mother asks you to give her $5 and you tell her off, that's a sin. Sorry, you guys. Um, give me one second. But yeah, everything we do has a sin. Guilt is kind of like a sin. Um, It says... Guilt over sin can cause you to separate yourself from God. 
Pride alone can ensnare us in million, a million ways. So when you're guilty, guilt has a way of separating you from God, which is a sin. Because you allow that guilt to become um, a wall between your intimacy with God. And when you're not intimate with God, you tend to do things that are not of God and tend to think that, all right, because I messed up and I did this, I might as well just continue to do this instead of being intimate with God and allowing him to come in and help you and open up your heart and things like that. Um, so I'm just going to get to the part that I need to get to. So the quote that I really wanted to discuss from out the book is actually from the Clinging to Hopes and Dreams and Collins. It says that um, nothing in this world compares to the hope we have in Christ, to the glory to come. As we cling, we store up eternal treasures in heaven and experience the power of a transformed life here on earth to the glory of the Lord and, um, or glory to, sorry, to the glory of our Lord. And I just thought that was profound. Like I marked it and then I marked it again. I don't know. It's just, there's so much I can discuss about this book. Like I love fervent. Fervent is definitely one that builds upon prayer. This one builds upon prayer differently um as well as being intimate with god because people can pray without intimacy which it sounds weird but it happens um you can study the word of god without intimacy but the things that she says the the input and the revelations that she give i mean it's just it's a lot it's it's a lot i mean you guys can see my tabs i have and I'm just looking at the screen to make sure it's in frame. But I have marked up this book entirely. Um, my first copy wasn't as marked up. But still, like, I highlighted. I was writing and stuff. Like, I don't know what else to say besides that I love this book. And that you need to pick up a copy. Like, seriously, this book is everything. Like, I even have an e-book copy. That's how obsessed I am with this book. I've given this book to my mother her co-worker, um, my first lady, I've given it to some of the sisters in my church, I've given it to uh, my brother's girlfriend, I've given it away for giveaways, like, this book is everything, if I, <sighs> this isn't my top five for Christian nonfiction, and this video is so long, it's much longer than the fervent review, just because, like I said, there's so much, and this book really pulls at the heart, like, just, just read this book, like, Read cling, learn to cling to God, understand why you should cling to God, understand how to cling to God, and um, just grow in your faith, grow in your relationship with him, because it will change your life for the better. When I say this is one of the books that has changed my life, you guys, I mean that in the best way possible. This book has been one of the books that changed my life, and um, I am so grateful for Kim Cash for writing this book. I talk to her on her Instagram channel, I comment on her YouTube videos, she also has a show that she created for this i mean she had a conference that i really wanted to go to it was a two-day conference i really wanted to go to back in june but i didn't make it um but i definitely want to go next year if she has one i mean she just has a whole movement with clinging and i think it's so amazing i highly suggest you guys check out the book if you can get your hands on a dvd study do that um i am planning to do another read along with this book because i feel like it's such a profound book that needs to be read needs to be shared with many people and um yeah, I just, I have all the words. Read it, get it, love it, <laughs> and utilize it. That's that's the main thing I want to say about books. Um, These reviews, when I give these reviews, I want to be able to connect them to my own personal experiences so you guys can see how I've grown through reading these books, as well as to help you guys understand that when you read these books, non, especially these non-Christian, non-fiction Christian books, um, after you read them, utilize the things that you've read like utilize them and i have utilized everything that i've read from cling i've utilized everything that i've read from fervent i mean all these books here <laughs> will be utilized one way or another but um that's it for this video this video was super duper long i didn't mean for this stuff this um review to be super long my next review i don't even know what to do the next review on because i have so many books so let's see Okay, guys, so I have three books here that I can review for you guys, and I'm going to review them all, but I don't know which one to do next. So, the first one that I can review next is The Esther Anointing by Michelle McLean Walters. I love this lady to death. Oh, my gosh. I literally own her, all her books. Where are the other ones? I have them. Can you see them here? 
I have Deborah, Anna, and Ruth. She's also coming out one, with one called Hannah Anointing next year. Can't wait. So I can definitely review this one. I will say that this is one of the books that helped me start Daughter of Increase. Just wanted to let you guys know that. So I can do this one. I can do Anywhere Faith by Heather Seen King, which... <sighs> this book is amazing. What is the quote? I have to just read the quote for you guys quickly because it, it tore me to pieces. Um, it says... Lord, send me anywhere, only go with me. Lay any burden on me, only sustain me. Sever any tie but the tie that binds me to thyself. And she got this from a poem written by David Livingstone. This book is just about having faith anywhere. Um, it's basically about overcoming fear, insecurity, and excuses, and saying yes to God. Having the faith to go anywhere that he puts you or wants you to go. I loved it. Gave this book five stars. So I can review this one. Or, the next one that I can do is The Battle Plan for Prayer by the, oh my gosh, what are their names? <laughs> the Kendrick Brothers, Stephen and Alex Kendrick, um, which are the creators, I believe, of War Room, which is the movie that Priscilla Shire was in. So, I can review this one, which I did read as well. So, I have these three books. Um, let me know down below which one you would like me to review next, um, which everyone has the most I guess picks I will do I will actually probably put a poll on Twitter as well okay so I'm gonna do a poll either on Twitter Instagram or the face Facebook group and Facebook page so check those out but also um leave comments down below about where you would like to which book you would like to see me review next all three of these will be reviewed I just need to know which one to review next because I'm gonna probably have to do a refresher <laughs> on these books because it's been a minute but um yeah that's it for this video and I guess that's it. Long super, long, super duper video, but I hope this video was helpful. Um, if I haven't convinced you to buy clean, then I don't know what to tell you. Um, but I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!